anyone want to share something? <clears throat> okay, I'll start with you, Joel, and I'll come to you after. Thank you, Babaji. Thank you. Um, I just, I, several things, but coming here at this time, the field is so silent and so potent. And it's, it, it's experienced as that. And it's, it's a wonderful thing. It's, it's got fire, but it's um, so clear. Yes. <clears throat> um, so thank you. Thank you for all that you're sharing and offering to us all the time and for this opportunity. Yes. Very good. Um, the beingness is really clear. The beingness is clear. It's very clear. Mm. And Life is presenting a lot of challenges. Yes. And I don't know that I'm meeting those challenges with the fullness of the, of the beingness that I experience. Yes. First of all, does beingness experience a challenge? No. Let's just slow down. Let's take each one's sharing personally for a minute, meaning for yourself and listen, and see if it, is there any challenges for beingness? Let's just ask this question. The challenges are for the person. The person. Now, I cannot ask you, forget about the person, because I don't think you can. Sometimes the prayer we must make, you must ask God, Lord, Father, please remove the deep message in this body of personhood and its world. Please remove the energetic message, the history the attachment, the belief, the culture of personhood, the DNA of personhood from this farm. I offer this message that is implanted in this body of the identity of personhood because I cannot shake it off. Every direction we turn, he's there. And then you can say, whatever arises, whatever appears from any region of time is visible to something which itself is invisible. We spoke yesterday in satsang where someone was sharing, there is something in me that is not visible. Do you all know what that means? So the life comprises of the seemingly tangible, visible one who has a message, has an orientation, as an identity, as a lineage, as a gender, as culture, as race, as background, as dreams, as identity. And yet behind this is a space beyond all those references, which, which is true. Both true. Which is you? But it's difficult to say, I am not the person. Only as you cannot simply deny, I don't want person, go away. He's not going to go. Go away, I don't want you, mind and person. 
And the mind says, make me. Make me. I'm here to stay. Do what you're going to do. Because the very one who is fighting the mind comes from mind also. But nobody questions. No one knows that personal identity is also a form of mind also and being. But the person can evolve to reach a place where one is in search of truth and who is willing to tackle personal identity and to go beyond the limitation of personal identity. Happens in identity, but what you may call sattvic identity, pure. After sattvic identity, beingness. It must transform into beingness. Is it too complicated what I said? So, when I say the present exercise that was offered and is being offered to everybody, it was not ready three years ago, or five years ago, or seven years. Seven years ago, maybe inv the invitation to freedom come. We could take hold of that. Now, the commitment to freedom exercise in keeping the attention inside beingness. If you were told that some time ago, perhaps you wouldn't understand, what you're talking about? We don't know what is beingness. But when I say beingness now, although you cannot physically recognize beingness, it is significant to you or not? Yes. yes. Beingness means that from where the mind, a personal identity and its world is observable, but itself has no physical feature to say, oh, beingness look like this. So therefore, for as long as we have a strong attachment to personhood, that strong attachment to personhood will resist, will resist the pull, the invitation into beingness. You follow. Also, how you can follow, because must, you must be experiencing it also. And this is what you may call the journey of awakening. The different stages that we go through. What is the stage now? That, as uh, Joel said now, that yes, I can see that I am the beingness. At the same time, challenges are coming. Say, so for whom are they coming? For my person. I said, yes, it, it, it is experienced in the earthly self, the sense of myself. I have a history, I have relatives, I have a job, I have identity, I have a career. All of these things are part of my dynamic identity. And there is some, there is some noise here, that is not. It is not somehow. It is not feeling harmonious with the beingness. Does the beingness mind? So I'm not saying to you, uh, forsake your personal responsibility. There's going to come a time when there will be no friction. The sense of person will continue to do its thing, but you will see that the person is a very subjective identity and quite unstable. Although when we write about ourselves, about ourselves, we present a very stable presentation. This is how I am. This is me. What I like. This is my hobby. This is what. But over the years, these are always changing factors, no? Yet there is something that seems to be continuous, always there. The sense of presence is always there. Because behind the person is the presence. Presence and beingness, same thing. You may call this presence the weakness. The weakness to the person is not person. It has no distinguishing features like a space of pure awareness. The person has a structure, 
It has size. It has weight. It has age. It has experience in the world. It has references. But beingness needs none of this. It is limitless. <coughs> These are not things you can go and just share out in the world and talk to. You're not going to have uh, easy conversations. It's not a conversational piece. This is your own introspection. And you don't have to find the right language to express to anybody about this. Because the more often, the more we want to talk about this, is because we are not it. As it becomes clear, it becomes totally natural. And so simply you wonder, how could I have missed this? So whatever the challenges of personhood, they may even become higher for a while. That the, they become more loud for a while. But you are encouraged to persist. Just keep bringing the attention to not fighting personhood, not fighting mind, just coming more deeply into the recognition, the non-visual, non-dual recognition of beingness. This kind of language is not so easily graspable in our traditional language field. To speak about beingness and non-dual perception feels what they're talking about. So it's, it's, an, it's not like an indoctrination, it is a discovering. The challenges that you experience in the state of personhood may just seem like they won't go away. I say, don't fight with that. The invitation is to keep recognizing that the, the person itself is a phenomenon witnessed in a space that is indefinable. You're ready for that. You're ready for that. You cannot force it. You cannot force it. You must somehow qualify by uh, keep looking. And it somehow just happens. Suppose you were, uh, if you remember, you know, the first time some of you went to ride a bicycle. How many times we fall off? Nobody can teach you how to ride bicycle. They can give you a bicycle and say, look, you know, put a straight, a flat place, have a go. And you will fall off. You can't. How can somebody teach you a balance? But you did not give up because you saw others doing it. And you felt, no, I have to do it. And you keep trying, oh, oh, try, try. And then one day, ah, 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 and then poof. And then again, and after a while, somehow, if somebody asks you, how did you do it? You can't say. How did you unbecome your mind? We can't really say. I was following this guidance. I don't know how it happened. But like all this stuff just fell away. How did you grow? So don't worry about challenge in the mind. A challenge in the mind will come because there's a fear to let go of personhood. There's some kind of fear, like I might make the wrong move and then I lose myself and don't find the truth. <laughs> and then what? I lost my person, and I didn't find presence. <laughs> so, this is mind. This is mind. OK. Can I, can I just say one more, one yes, more thing? Uh, I, I just I want to to lay down this idea that I'm struggling and this idea that I need to ask for help. I just want to lay it down at the yeah. feet of the Supreme of like, I just want to offer that, that up. The idea that you need help. Well, it's okay to need help until you go beyond the need for help. 
that's a wisdom also to know that, oh no, I need more support in this. Not eternal support, because at some point you realize, ah, it's like this. For a while I really felt I needed help to be. Then you realize at a certain point, and now I am. And now you need help? No, it's here. But we need to be reminded why. Because so quickly the reflex to go back to person had come. It keeps coming, keeps coming. And we have given up on quite a few things. Will you give up on this, you see? Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, uh, I don't have any question. Mm-hmm. I came forward because I have a commitment with you, and uh, I don't want the mind hide in some way, so that's why I'm here and just want you to say you don't it. want to do it. I, I want to make sure the mind is not hiding. That's why I'm coming forward. Ah, I want to make sure that the mind is not hiding. And if it is hiding, what? It can't. <laughs> so you've made sure. Sorry? So you have made sure. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to check with you, you know, to... Yes, it's good. To just, yeah. 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 Actually, a, um, a wandering came. You're... Using the word consciousness, mm-hmm. awareness. Yeah. And I reflected upon it because I was not sure. And then it came to me, and this I want to check with you. Consciousness is the I, I being, the I that is always here, even now, mm-hmm. talking to you, it's happening. Mm-hmm. It's all happening inside presence, I, mm-hmm. I presence, mm-hmm. right? Okay. No, it, it, okay. <laughs> and awareness, however, it's before the I. There is no I there. It's, it's, it's not it's before. Uh, the I consciousness is coming out from emptiness, which is this awareness. But there is some e- No, it's good. <laughs> it's good. It's good. It's good. We can say like this. Emptiness, I cannot... Uh, something wants to grasp it, mind surely, and it makes it quite uh, unclear. It makes a noise on it, because how can it I It cannot catch? be grasped with the mind. Yeah. The mind is like the instrument for evaluating variety and change and comparisons and so on. But how can I stabilize in emptiness, being empty? This emptiness I, f- I felt, I, I realized, mm-hmm. like there is no word here. I mean, the word is here, yeah. but it's, 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 it's nothing, really. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's, it's happening, it's, it, it's, it's passing by the person, it's mm-hmm. words, and even the eye consciousness mm-hmm. arising. To, to see, because without mm-hmm. the eye consciousness, there is nothing, there is no world, there is no person, and we're just not here talking, basically. Mm-hmm. But this awareness, this emptiness. Mm-hmm. Ah. What about it? I don't know. Huh? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's true, I don't know. It cannot be known in the classical sense. Yes. By what would it be known? That's the point. (laughs) You can perhaps say it alone knows itself, but not knowledge or knowing something in the in the mental way. Yeah. Don't be very French about it. (laughs) What does this mean? I'm French, so I don't know. Okay. Are you French? <laughs> okay. Because one time I went to, uh, many years ago, I, I was invited to one friend of mine. He was teaching in university in French. He's French, 
in French, uni in French university and um, teaching philosophy. So I went there and he invites me. He always told his students, this is my teacher. And then I came there and they, we had a time together. Okay, first in the classroom, in the, in the university room. And then also one other teacher of philosophy came there. And uh, then uh, they said, oh, so this is Mujin and we're talking like this. And they're asking questions and like this. And at some point, um, uh, the, what I found, what everybody's saying, yeah, say, they say something and they say, so what do you think? And I say, I don't think. <laughs> you don't think? You don't think? What do you mean you don't think? <laughs> but I think, but what you don't think? And it was, I think, think. So I thought, you think a lot. <laughs> like that's the one you're talking about now. Uh -huh. Yes, I know. Yeah. The being you're talking about, yeah. <laughs> okay, so like this, as I said, uh, they were always, oh, well, how you cannot think? How you say, oh, what it means you don't think? I said, I, it's, it's not a big deal. I, <laughs> we had such a, we had such a, and uh, for three days, um, and then after the second day, they came out of classroom, and then we went and had some tea someplace, and after this, Somehow something changed, and they started. A lot of people started crying, and uh, like we had broken out of the, the I think, <laughs> and then there was lots of tears. And it was actually quite rich at the time. That I was asked if I would go back, and I. <laughs> I said, "Yeah, I don't think so." <laughs> <laughs> so, but there is, um, I, I say this with something because at a certain point, if we keep uh, to seemingly explore uh, through the mind, it's like it just goes into some kind of chaos. You said it actually, just like this. So it was very satisfying to hear you speak like that. So when you say consciousness, it really comes with a sense of I. Uh, the consciousness is the universal witness, you can say, or the sense of presence that is I. Yes, yes, this is. But awareness is not I. That's true. But then, or not, leave it. If it's not I, it's prior to I, before I. Yeah? How does that relate here? Can the I go further? What is making that inquiry? Is it the awareness or the I? In your linear way of using it, which I quite like. Can you ask again, please? What is, what is exploring and trying to find out uh, something about awareness? Can, can anything be verified from where? Who would make that? Uh... Is, is it I? Yes. Yes. Yeah, sure. That's why it's not working with awareness. Right? Yes. So, are we stuck? No. Because? Because there is nothing to be stuck or to talk about. Yes. It's true. Good. So then it's time to sit now. <laughs> Nothing more to you. talk about. <laughs> Isn't it? Thank you so much. Yes, yes. And uh, You must recognize, at a certain point, talking is not working. We have used as much as we can of the intellect. It goes so far, then it can't go no further. Something recognized, this I can go no further. Whatever recognized that is beyond I. OK, you go before. I get my sticks ready. Uh, hi, Guruji. Uh, yeah, I don't 
I just really feel to expose uh, a fear that is coming mm-hmm. once in a while. And it's, um, it's like a doubt, because uh, there is awareness. I'm aware of awareness. And still the fear... It the I who is aware of awareness is what? Slow down, please listen. Don't miss. The I that is aware, you says, I'm aware of awareness. This I that's aware of awareness is, where, where is that located in awareness? What is saying, I'm aware, I'm awareness? There is no I. Okay, I accept, no. And still the fear, it, it feels like it, um, it, it's like a paradox because Awareness is not um, up, upset about it, but still something, it's like the ultimate doubt. <laughs> yes. Uh, no, there's no ultimate doubt. There's a stuck doubt. Um, there cannot be an ultimate doubt. There may be seemingly persistent doubting that seem to come up. Mm-hmm. Does it come up for the awareness itself? No. Yes. Who is the doubter? What is the strength of the doubter? And what is doubted? Uh, it, um, the fear was not coming with a message, but now I feel that it's like the fear of that I can lose awareness. Yes. That you can lose awareness. Well, you can. If there's you, apart from awareness. This you that you speak about lost awareness. It's the loser of awareness, the biggest loss. And what replaced this loss is your person. You got your person. You exchange awareness for the person. Now you have your person. In the ultimate uh, place, there, no such thing happened. You can say, this is all imagined or dreamed. But I will not have any debate with a philosopher about it, or some, uh, I don't know who are the people who talk about these things. I'm only interested in the one who is in search of truth, not in a, as an intellectual conviction or certainty, but as an experiential sort of finality in that seeing. You see, but I, I am with you in that. That you have come now. You say I I am I I am that awareness. It's good enough. I am that awareness. There's no much more that one needs to speak. Those are the last words. After this, all words vanish. That's the last words you are permitted to say. I know I am the awareness. Boom. You are the awareness. Okay. What does awareness have to say now? Everything else is being said through the I and the world. And that's okay. It causes that. But what is awareness saying? What, can, what doubt and whose doubt it can be? But still it seems there is some sense of an existential doubt that maybe... If I continue, I might lose awareness. And you must identify where that comes from. Whose voice is it? Is it awareness's voice? Can awareness be afraid of losing awareness? So it must come from some kind of entity. And the first and most subtle entity after awareness is the I consciousness. The first phenomenon. Out of him is born the world, for whom the world exists. Does it seem that this is mere philosophy or some sort of um, intellectual masturbation or something? What is it? Yes. And then if it is true, what is the fruit of this truth? Mm-hmm. 
wordless silence. And no words can describe. No words can describe. No imagination can fashion. Awareness cannot be conceived. It is not available to the mind that the mind can capture it. It is prior to all knowing, to all things known. Yes? yes. How did you come to yes? No, even yes and no is in, insignificant. Then maybe a doubt come. Then of what value? If there's nothing to measure, what's the what's the value? Where is the medal? Where's the prize? Maybe it can come like that. You mean all of this for nothing? <laughs> well, yes and no but not the nothing of the mind. There's two kinds of nothing. The nothing of the mind and the nothing of isness, which includes everything and all the potential of things. And yet it does not create any impression upon the source from which it comes and appears. Tell me when I've gone too far, please. We are not here, I'm not giving to you something to accumulate knowledge. I'm not giving you a basket to put knowledge in. I'm not asking you to hold on to knowledge. Does awareness want to know? Is there some value in what we are sharing? Yes. Something? What is the value? Everything. Freedom. Yes. If I say freedom beyond the concept of freedom, we are good? Yes. Ah. You're good? Yes. So. And doubt? No, just a sensation of fear there. The sensation is good. Any sensation can come. The sky, limitless, infinite, unending, welcomes all visitors. Moon, sun, clouds, rainbows. It doesn't complain. It manifests them, yet nothing sticks. Everything is a tourist floating by. Like all things born of time. This is why the sages have said, you are the sky of pure awareness. It's not that you don't care. You do care, but you're not hooked. Something takes care of this manifestation much more greatly than the human mind conceives. And this is why it's said in the ancient scriptures that God created everything first. Then he put man. He says, no. Can you imagine if he had put man first? <laughs> then all of this is because of him. For you I made all these things. But he put him last. All this I made already. You're just tenant. My little joke. Sorry. Okay. We will do... 
have already, you see? Look at this. I wrote some time today. It's my little joke again, too. We start 2.30, I say 3.15, end of satsang for now. And then we do sitting, then we finish everything 3.45, now it's 3.50. <laughs> so we have done it, we have covered it. You all know what, what to do. Five minutes first. Keep uh, attention only in beingness. If you hear this, it simply means drop everything, stay empty. Because the attention will keep going back, will come, go to the mind, go to something. And it's the habit. And this habit is creating worlds for you, troubles for you, jobs for you. So just keep it only in your attention, only in, you may say, awareness or in beingness. Alive. Now, we have not heard this instruction in our life much. So what tends to happen is that when you're told, don't engage with the mind, the attention is not used to it. Only accidentally. When I say no, deliberately, keep the attention only in the space of being. And then what tends to happen? Sleep comes. Not used to it. Or the reflex to go back into duality and to create and to all wonderful ideas are going to come. Oh, whoo, write it down quick, quick, quick. I said, no, not this. Drop it. Naked emptiness. Alive. Fresh. Yes? Yes. Feel the pull, stay empty. Reject all minds' invitation.
empty. Thank you. You remember when we, before I use the example, we're doing this? Is awareness doing this? No. So this is uh, like mind, life, thought, energy, whatever. Awareness is doing this? No. Awareness not moving. Okay, good, good. This time, 10 minutes. No fighting, simply remain empty, awake. Find that effortless awareness as it is. Feel the pull. Ignore the pull. B.
It's not about relaxing or tension. Clear. Space of pure awareness. Uncreated awareness. No mind. No door. Awareness is not affected by what is happening in the body or mind. Notice this. Not imagination. Any feeling of drifting or sleepiness is observable, leave.
last five minutes. Eyes open or close. Let's say open. No drifting. Senses functioning does not affect awareness. Spontaneous functioning does not affect awareness. Happens in awareness.
home. Thank you. Thank you. Awareness without identity, awareness without self, is self-awareness. You follow? Mm -hmm.